Ken Ioso, and I was the chair of the Peace and Justice Committee probably 1989 to 1992, maybe a little earlier than that. Um, I have a prop with me today. Uh, this says, we can all do something, which is a quote from Archbishop Romero of El Salvador, who was martyred shortly after he made this statement. And this was actually hand carved and painted by my predecessor, who was the chair before I was. His name was Roger Batie, and he and his wife, Claudia, were real leaders and helped me with it. You know, what was going on in Central America, which was really the focus of the group at that time. We were involved in protests. I went to El Salvador and Nicaragua in 1989 on the Center for Global Education trip, partly funded by the McAllister Plymouth Church. That was part of our focus on peace and justice at that time. And um, I'm very proud of our work there. We did a lot of great work and we did sign the commitment to peacemaking probably while I was a member of the group but not the chair of the group. So you have a lot to be proud of, a great tradition that continues today. I'm Muriel Bachman and I've been here since 1967 and I was with the peacemaking group when it first started. I worked with Elon Skinner and Al Epley and many other people in this church to get the peace move going. Well, my name is Elon Malmquist Skinner and I actually joined this church many years before I could worship here because I was working in other churches. But by the 1980s, I started to attend and got involved. And what I got involved with was a group of people most concerned about peace. The group here at McAllister was the most committed, um, open, uh, disciplined, thanks to Al Apley, group on peace that we'd ever had. And it was able to bring go step by step so that we had made a statement and could work it through both denominations nominations and for me it's it was a time when I really felt the church was moving into areas that were terribly important and after that we've done more and more so for me this became the nucleus of the church I discovered peacemaking through the women of the Presbyterian Church uh, when I was at that church, the women sent me and another woman along, people who had never been there. And I discovered the wonderful work that the Presbyterian Church was doing in peacemaking and the role of the women in that, and I was astounded. And when I came back, uh, I joined the peacemaking committee of the Presbytery, and eventually I became the chair of that. When our little church closed and joined Mac Plymouth, I came to Mac Plymouth and discovered that they had people very interested in peacemaking too. And ever since we've been working in various ways to create change in the world. So it's a wonderful place to be. Hi, I'm Joel Roberts. Um, I am not a founding member of the uh, Peace Group, but I uh, joined in a fairly early time. I was chairman of the, uh, well, what was called the Christian Service Committee, which is the predecessor of the uh, Mission and Social Justice. And the peacemakers were a kind of independent group, and they were encouraged to work with the Christian Service Committee. And then as the peace statement was drafted, I was uh, responsible for presenting it to the session. A later high point of my involvement would be with the Panamache project, and uh, we've talked about that a lot, where uh, people from our church help these uh, people in this small community in the mountains in Guatemala to buy land where they could grow food for their own families. In more recent times, the uh, peace group has became revived at the time of the Iraq War, 
because of concerns about that. Well, my hope for the future, to take advantage of opportunities to work for, for peace and justice. Hey, my name is Janine McAllister. Uh, we joined uh, McAllister Plymouth Church in 1982, and shortly after we joined, our son Sky was born, and he was baptized here. And we tried throughout his entire raising to raise him to be a peacemaker, and I'm so proud of, of uh, what he is doing for the world now in terms of trying to bring peace and that's that's what we've tried to do is to always through um, our family and through the people around us um, to talk about what's going on in the world and to talk about ways that we can make the world a more peaceful place. Thank you. My name is Roberta Aitchison Olson and we've been members here since 1991. Ray and I and Sari and Simon. Um, some of the educational events here and one that really interests me was in the December of 2002 and that was a series of lectures on just war, just peace and people were really really worried about our country's march to war. Organ reorganized a peacemaking group and we and I, I remember we had these brainstorming sessions of what we could do not just marching but or organizing here to sign, write petitions and talking to our neighbors and uh, writing letters to the editor decided that this was really my calling and I found a lot of spiritual renewal with the other people uh, in this peacemakers group as it evolved people came and went and so on but then I uh, decided to co-chair with Molly Redman in about 2006 and that has been a wonderful wonderful experience I've learned a lot about peacemaking from people in this church all different ways we do it in our in our ourselves, with our families, in community, as citizens, and I'm particularly interested in and supportive of our youth mission trips because I think seeing the youth bring bring this forward into the future uh, gives me a lot of hope. Hi, I'm uh, Ray Olson, and Roberta and I first came to visit the church in about 1990, and one thing we noticed was the social activism of many in the church. I remember talking to Joel Roberts about the Panamache project. I was very impressed with that. And we later, shortly after that, we joined the church and I became active with the Peace and Justice Committee. We were working a lot on children's issues in those days on that committee. There was something called the Fund Kids First campaign which we worked on. Roger Grusing was interested in that, Ken Iosa. And the point was to get make sure children's me needs were met. I just continued with it and became very active with the Peacemakers Committee prior to the beginning of the Iraq War in 2002. And we've been going pretty strong ever since then. And unfortunately, the wars are still continuing and we're continuing to work for peace and justice. I'm Rob Raymer and um, been a member of the church since, I don't know, somewhere around 2003. Um, became active with the peacemakers, I think it was 2006, when it appeared that they were going to escalate the war in Iraq and we organized a number of demonstrations where we went out to the bridge over 280. We decided we wanted something different than just going down to the Marshall Avenue bridge. And this was overlooking a freeway, very cold winter morning. And there was probably about 300 people that came out to that. And then another time we did kind of a die-in where we had uh, people lie down in front of, I think that was the March March against the war, the uh, 2007 anniversary of the war. So, and uh, we had kids, we had grandmas in wheelchairs all go from the church and um, those are sort of the two big historical things I remember, so. 
I'm Molly Redmond. Um, at present, which is um, January 2011, I'm co-chair of uh, the Peacemaker Group, and I have been involved with Mac Plymouth since the build-up to the Iraq War in 2002, and basically started falling more and more in love with the Peacemaker people, and that's how I wound up um, with the group. As far as what I remember, um, not much. It's just that the last eight years have been filled with war and violence and heartbreak and disappointment on political and national levels. And this is a place where I can work and do my small bit for peace and my hopes for the future, well, for more peacemakers everywhere at every level and for me to be working in this church in one way or another for a long time. I actually came to peacemaking from more the justice side of things. I really never saw myself particularly as a peace person. Uh, I was interested in labor organizing and some other stuff, but it was really more theological more than anything else. It's the biblical notion of peace, which entails not just the, Martin Luther King said, it's not just the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. And that if we are going to move towards a just society, the armaments, the war industry, um, the, uh, the, 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 the sending of, of the children of the poor to be soldiers uh, in wars overseas has to end. I was very influenced by Martin Luther King uh, because he tied these two things together and that's really part of what my call to the ministry is all about. One of the things I tell the peacemakers is that peacemaking is not tangential to the gospel. It is central to the mission of the Christian life. It's um, how do you live the faith? How do you live uh, sustainably, responsibly? How do you um, treat uh, the lady in the checkout line? Um, who do you vote for? How many committee meetings are you willing to go to? What community involvement? All those things are related to witnessing to God's presence in our lives and the biblical notion of shalom. So I came to Mac Plymouth in large part because of the kind of mission and ministry that was here. Um, also the fact that the, this church also takes the Bible seriously. Those two things, taking the Bible seriously and being serious about mission in the world, including um, in the political, economic, and social realm. Not only, but including the political, economic, and social realm. So that one of the ways that you take care of the poor and help people is not only by building soup kitchens, by making sure that there are jobs and programs and policies that provide housing and good jobs for real people. So that's part of the reason I'm at Mac Plymouth and I've been happy here for 10 years.